Sure. Commissioner Landon? Present. Commissioner Quavala? Here. Commissioner Gill? Here. Commissioner Bergen? Here. Commissioner Buck? Present. Uh, Commissioner McGinley has an excused absence and um, looks like Commissioner Salazar is joining, so I'll give him a chance to connect and then call him on the roll. So Commissioner Salazar, we're doing roll call. Are you present? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, call for agenda item, communications plan for public facilities and service plan. Um, Molly Markarian. Good evening, commissioners. I'm going to share my screen. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to lower that. Um, I'm Molly Markarian, senior planner, and uh, the city's representative for the public facilities and services plan update project. Um, we are updating the PFSP uh, together with Lane County and the city of Eugene with support from Lane LCOG and a DLCD technical assistance grant. The community engagement tasks for this um, effort are split between the cities and LCOG. So with me tonight is also Mike McGilvray, who is one of our uh, DPW uh, communications coordinators. Tonight, I will provide a brief project overview and then highlight components of the draft communications plan, including the stakeholder outreach strategy. Your input on this plan will guide us on how to make sure that we work effectively with and meaningfully involve the Springfield community throughout the project. Some of you are familiar with the PFSP, um, others may be less familiar. Uh, so to reorient you to that, the Eugene Springfield Metro Area Public Facilities and Services Plan, also known as the PFSP, is a refinement of the Eugene Springfield Metropolitan Area General Plan or the Metro Plan. The cities of Eugene and Springfield have adopted individual amendments to the PFSP since it was adopted, but the document itself has not been updated to reflect any amendments since 2011. So in addition to incorporating revisions to reflect those amendments that haven't been incorporated since 2011, we are also going to be revising and clarifying the PFSP text, updating the project list and maps, and also uh, syncing the plan amendment process with the most current Metro plan amendment process. The PFSP update kicked off uh, in January, and we have a goal of having it finalized and adopted by June of next year. Moving on to the communications plan, which is attachment one in your packet. Um, I'd just like to note that the scope of this update project is not as robust as other projects for which we have brought community engagement plans to you recently. So this communications plan is accordingly simpler. Um, in terms of the project structure, the project management team or PMT is responsible for setting project expectations, reviewing drafts of the updates, and collaborating with TAC members. We're also responsible for publicizing project updates. The Technical Advisory Committee, or TAC, um, is responsible for providing project and math data from updated agency plans and also reviewing the drafts and is comprised of representatives from the agencies listed on the screen in the right-hand column. 
The activities listed in the plan highlight uh, the project specific communication strategy. LCOG has already created a project website and they will maintain that um, to keep the public informed as the project progresses. Posting drafts, project updates, frequently asked questions. Um, they will also be sending an initial stakeholder announcement to introduce the project, the website, and to invite people to uh, sign up for the interested parties list. And they plan on sending that to the Lane County Home Builders, Thousand Friends of Oregon, the Eugene and Springfield Chambers of Commerce, Better Housing Together, and then the Eugene and Springfield um, Realtors Associations. The cities will link um, from their websites to that um, centralized LCOG project website. Um, the cities will also be providing information in our e-newsletters and through social media posts. The public will have a couple of opportunities to provide input on the draft PFSP uh, via written comment or oral testimony at the public hearings. And those opportunities will start, um, we anticipate that they will start in late, later this summer um, preceding the joint planning commission hearings. And then again, uh, preceding the joint uh, city council and board of commissioners hearings in early 2023. So with that, I will um, turn it over to the CCI uh, for any questions and feedback that you have on the draft communications plan. Okay, any discussion? Questions, comments? Uh, Commissioner Quavela. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, uh, in addressing this in regard to um, the PSF, I know that the PSF oftentimes has um, uh, infrastructure and proposed um, changes uh, new infrastructure to be built up. And sometimes that is in areas where are in the outside the uh, city limits, but in the UGB or uh, in the urbanizable fringe. And I think that it would be, if we do come up a list with a list of projects, I know that that's gonna come up pretty early, that there should be some outreach in those areas where those proposed changes are gonna take place because there's been uh, instances where the PSF came in on decisions uh, late in the game after, um, along with a proposal. And um, I think people were surprised by what was contained in the PSF. So I think that might serve to alert people to what's happening and educate them as to what the PSF actually says. Thanks. Other questions or comments, please. Okay. Uh, hearing none, do we uh, are we ready for a motion to adopt the communications plan? Okay. I move to approve the communications plan and the agenda packet for this item as presented in attachment one. We have a second. A second. Moved and seconded. Um, any discussion on the motion to approve? Hearing none, I'll uh, now call for a vote. Could we get uh, a roll call? Sure. Uh, Commissioner Buck? Aye. Commissioner Bergen? Aye. Commissioner Gill? Aye. Commissioner Quavala? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? 
Uh, we didn't hear your aye, Commissioner Salazar. Aye. Yeah. And uh, Commissioner Landon. Aye. And Commissioner McKinley is absent. Okay. I believe the results are six in favor, zero opposed, one absent. Uh, so the motion carries. Um, I believe that we stand, uh, that completes this part. And so we will uh, adjourn here and meet again at 7 p.m. for the regular session. That is correct. And I realized that um, with us doing hybrid now that we need to be more cognizant of the timing of these meetings so that we don't have these big gaps in between. Um, so I didn't think about that until we'd already been scheduling the meeting. Uh, but for those of you who are sitting there in City Hall, um, I think the library is open. <laughs> <laughs> that may be not a bad idea. Um, so yes, yeah, see you back at seven o'clock. Same, same login. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. Andy, are you going to pause the recording? I hereby open the regular session of the planning committee. Please rise and join me in repeating the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have any corrections to the minutes for April 19th, 2022? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes for April 19th, 2022, uh, so indicate. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Let's see, who are we missing? Com uh, Commissioner Gill, did you declare? Aye. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, all opposed, nay. Hearing none, minutes are approved. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, we will now take business from the audience. This is the time in our agenda for the public to provide testimony on any topic relevant to the Planning Commission that is not otherwise on the agenda tonight. I would ask members of the audience who are joining us by phone or online to please keep yourselves on mute until you are called on to provide public testimony. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom or press star nine if joining by phone. If you are here in person, please fill out a request to speak card and present it to the Planning Commission assistant. Uh, when called on, upon to speak, please state your name and mailing address. Please keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, do we have anybody in chambers who filled out a card? Yes. Okay. Not for business. Not for business from the audience. Yeah. So that doesn't apply to this particular section here? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have anybody online who uh, has have raised their hands to speak? I don't see anybody with their hand raised for business from the audience. Okay, hearing uh, hearing none. Call for agenda item: Springfield Public Schools Zoning Map Amendment. And we'll turn the time over to the Assistant City Attorney. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the role of the Planning Commission is to conduct public hearings and to make decisions about land use matters in Springfield. In making those decisions, the Commission must apply the law of Springfield that existed when the application was filed and cannot vary from or change that law. 
Members of the Planning Commission are to be unbiased. Before the start of the hearing, members of the Planning Commission will state whether they have any conflicts of interest, such as family, financial, or business relationship with any of the applicants or with regard to the land in question. If a potential conflict exists, the commissioner will state whether he or she is without actual bias or whether he or she would like to step down from the Planning Commission during the case. Planning commissioners will also state whether they have discussed the application in question with any of the parties or have any independent knowledge of relevant facts, such as from a visit to the site in question. If any of the planning commissioners have had such contacts, they will disclose the substance of that contact. If a planning commissioner has independent knowledge of relevant facts, the planning commissioner will summarize those facts. During the time for public testimony, a witness may challenge the impartiality of a planning commissioner and may rebut the substance of a planning commissioner's knowledge of the facts. The commissioner in question may respond to such a challenge. A copy of the procedures and agenda for today's hearing and copies of the staff report have been posted on springfieldoregonspeaks.org. Any person with an interest in today's agenda may offer relevant oral or written testimony or both. If you want the Planning Commission to consider your testimony and to preserve your right to appeal the decision to the City Council and ultimately to the Land Use Board of Appeals, you must testify orally or in writing before the Planning Commission closes the written record. You must raise an issue clearly enough so people can understand what it is and offer evidence in support of it, or else you cannot raise the issue on appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals. If you are the applicant, you must raise concerns about any conditions of approval clearly enough to allow the Planning Commission to respond to preserve your right to seek damages in circuit court. If you feel you need more time to prepare evidence or testimony for the Planning Commission, you can ask the Commission to hold it open the record or continue the hearing. You must make that request before the chair closes the public portion of the hearing. If the Planning Commission holds open the record, you can submit additional written testimony and evidence before the Commission makes a decision. If the Planning Commission continues the hearing, then oral and written testimony, including new evidence, can be offered at a future hearing. Regardless of whether the hearing is continued or the record is held open for any other reason, state law provides we must hold the record open for at least seven days after it is closed to all other parties to allow the applicant to submit final written arguments in support of an application, unless the applicant waives that right. Please make sure your testimony is related to the applicable criteria of approval. The criteria for zoning map amendment are in Springfield Development Code section 5.22-115C. The criteria are described in more detail in the staff report posted on springfieldoregonspeaks.org and will be summarized by staff in the presentation this evening. Demonstrations from the audience are prohibited. Comments from the audience or comments from the phone or online that are out of turn, such as those posted in the chat box, if it is turned on, will not be part of the record. And so chair, it is now appropriate to open the public hearing and to ask if any planning commissioner wishes to declare any bias, potential conflict of interest, ex parte contact, or independent knowledge of relevant facts. Thank you very much. I hereby open the public hearing. Planning commissioners, please disclose any conflicts of interest. Also disclose any ex parte contacts or independent knowledge of relevant facts. Uh, Sandy, can you conduct a roll call? Sure. sure. I, I've got to remember not to unmute myself because there are microphones here in the chambers. <laughs> We're all learning how to do this hybrid. Okay, so um, I'll start with Commissioner Buck. Any ex parte contacts or conflicts of interest? No. Uh, Commissioner Bergen? No ex parte contact or um, independent knowledge. Potential conflict of interest being a residential realtor in the area. Um, I have no, I am confident I can move forward on the decision without a bias. Commissioner Gill? Um, because I have a long history of advocating for this property, I um, do have bias, and so I'm going to step down from the commission during this discussion. Commissioner Quavala. Uh, thank you. I have no conflict of interest, uh, actual or potential, uh, and no ex parte contact. However, I am a 30-year resident of that neighborhood and have spent significant time driving on the streets around the property. So that has created, to my mind, independent knowledge of the traffic conditions as relates to Mill Street, D Street, E Street, and the parkways which surround the site. So I wanted to declare that um, I think that uh, 
Um, I will bring that up during my discussion, some of the facts that I know about the site. Commissioner Quavala, please, please bring those facts up before, after, after public testimony, but before the public hearing is closed so that if the applicant wishes to rebut any of that, um, there is that opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, please, please remind me if you haven't heard it from me. Thanks. Commissioner Salazar. Thank you. I have two declarations to make. One, the first being about independent knowledge of the site. I was previously employed by Cornerstone Community Housing, which um, formerly made a bid for the subject property. Um, that bid was not selected, so I don't believe that constitutes a, um, a conflict of interest. But um, as part of that bid process, I was able to tour the site multiple times and have independent knowledge of the floor plan of the buildings on the subject property that is not included in the um, materials included in the packet. Um, as a um, co potential conflict of interest, I would also like to declare that I own residential property directly adjacent to the site. However, I do believe that I can make a, an unbiased decision. Commissioner Salazar, um, if that knowledge of the floor plans and interior of the building you feel is relevant to your decision um, at all on this matter, then you'll want to provide more specific statement regarding what that independent knowledge is um, before the public hearing is closed. I do not believe that that independent knowledge will be um, relevant to this discussion for zoning. All right, and Commissioner Landon. I have no ex parte contacts or independent knowledge of the relevant facts. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone in the public who wishes to challenge the impartiality of the commissioners? Go ahead, Melissa. Hi there, folks. Good evening, planning commissioners. It's good to see you all again. Um, tonight's request is for the commission to approve a zoning map amendment for an approximately 1.1 acre portion located on the western side of 525 Mill Street, which is north of Main Street and west of Pioneer Parkway. The applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment to help facilitate high density residential development or redevelopment on a subject site. The applicant proposes rezoning the subject site from public land uh, and open space to high density residential, consistent with both the Metro plan and East Kelly Butte refinement plan designations. Here's a visual of the current zoning. The subject parcel is marked, I'm sorry, the subject site is marked with a black star and zones TL, uh, public land and open space. You can also see the high density residential and neighborhood commercial zoning surrounding the subject site. And here's a visual of the proposed zoning change where the subject site and portions of D Street, E Street, and Mill Street are rezoned to high density residential. According to the Springfield Development Code section 5.22-115, there are three applicable criteria of approval for this zoning map amendment request. I will read each criterion and explain how this proposal meets each of them. The first criterion is consistency with met the Metro plan and findings on pages three to four of the staff report covered this. Um, the application is consistent with the, the following Metro plan and Springfield comprehensive plan policies. Policy A.2 of the Metro plan, where residentially designated land within the urban growth boundary should be zoned consistent with the Metro plan and applicable plans and policies. Policy H.4 of the Springfield Comprehensive Plan's residential land use and housing element, where regulatory barriers are removed for siting and constructing high density housing types. And the last one is goal UG-1 policy two of the Springfield Comprehensive Plan's urbanization element, where redevelopment is facilitated by zoning amendments consistent with policies of the city's comprehensive and metro plans. And the next criterion um, is consistency with applicable refinement plans, plan district maps, 
conceptual development plans and functional plans. Um, and these are covered in the findings on pages four to five of the staff report. Uh, this property is located in the East Kelly Butte neighborhood. Therefore, the applicable city adopted refinement plan is the East Kelly Butte refinement plan. And this uh, refinement plans diagram designates this property as high density residential consistent with the Metro plan. There are two functional plans, the public facilities and services plan and the city's transportation system plan. However, there are no applicable policies in either of those plans that would affect the zoning map amendment request. And finally, the third criterion is provision of public facilities, services, and transportation networks. Uh, findings on pages five to six of the staff report cover this criterion. The subject site is, already has adequate access to nearby utility connections, urban amenities and services, and transportation corridors. Because this application meets the required criteria of approval, staff's recommendation is for the Planning Commission to approve the zoning map amendment application so that the subject site is rezoned high density res residential and is consistent with its Metro plan designation. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I also believe the applicant and um, the future developers are also in attendance for any follow up questions you may have. Thank you very much. At this time, a call for public testimony. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom if you're uh, connected virtually or press star nine if joining by phone. If you are here in person, please fill out a request to speak card and present it to the Planning Commission assistant. Uh, when called on to speak, please state your name and mailing address and whether you are in favor of the ap application, opposed to the application, or neutral to the application, please keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, when called on to speak, please state your name and mailing address and whether you are in favor, opposed or neutral, please keep your comments again to three minutes. Uh, do we have anybody signed up from the audience here? Um, before we get to the audience, we need to provide the applicant an opportunity to speak. Ah. My apologies. Um, we'll turn the time over to the applicant. Thank you. Um, so, uh, commissioners, I appreciate the opportunity to present tonight, and I'm going to keep my comments brief. Um, I think uh, city staff has done an excellent job of outlining the application and, and the intended uh, use of the rezoning process. Um, I would remind the, the commission respectfully that uh, previous to this rezoning process, we did have over 100 employees on this site. Uh, I don't believe transportation impact is going to be relevant in this conversation. Um, I really appreciate the, the detail of the developer who's come forward. Uh, Springfield School District Board Directors considered all applications for proposals and in line with what I believe is the city goals. Um, we, we feel that this is a great opportunity for the community and uh, are willing to answer questions that, that you have. I believe the developer is also uh, in the audience and willing to discuss details at this time. So thank you again. Thank you for the consideration. Okay. Thank you very much. As indicated, we'll uh, call for public testimony. Uh, and again, either, either use the raise hand feature if you're connected virtually, or make sure that you've handed a, a card into the assistant over here. Over here. Uh, I believe, Sandy, we start with those that are physically present. Okay. Yes, I believe, um, Jenna, would you please come up to the podium and make your testimony? Remember, we have three minutes. Also, Please state your name, mailing address, and whether you're in favor, a neutral, or opposed to the application. I don't think the microphone's working. I can hear you great, but. Give me one second here, see if I can. Okay, there we can go. you give it a try now, Jen? Test, test. Yep. That's good. Okay. 
Do you want me to repeat all of yeah, that? Yeah, start over. Okay. Uh, my name is Jenna Fribley. I am here um, on behalf of Campfire Collaborative Architecture and Design at 341 Main Street, Springfield. Uh, we are working with the developers on this project. And um, I guess I just wanted to first clarify to anybody that may be not familiar, uh, just by looking at the notice of this public hearing, you know, it's not clear that this zoning change is specifically for the portion of the school district owned parcel that contains the um, old admin building, but not the entire parking lot and the entire warehouse facility on that same site. And the purpose of this rezone is to help complete like the final step of the sale of that parcel of the, um, the old admin building, which was a original 1921 high school. Um, and the developer who is purchasing the property uh, is intending to redevelop the interior only of that building. So it is not going to be torn down. Um, it is going to be nationally historically listed and we are going to be keeping the um, character of the building intact and really trying to uh, celebrate that character and the history of the site um, and convert the interior into 35 apartments, uh, market rate apartments. We'll be providing adequate parking for every unit on site um, and addition, actually probably slightly more than uh, one stall per unit. And um, we're really excited to, you know, salvage this building and actually make it thrive again when it was probably going to be torn down just a few years ago. Um, so I hope that uh, everyone else is just, just as excited about it, but uh, we'll see. So thank you so much. And I'm in favor if I didn't say that the second time. <laughs> okay. Julie? your name and your address. My name is Julie Sonam and I live at 407 South 4th Street in Springfield, just a few blocks away. And I came here tonight um, because I was asked to come here. I am also a real estate agent and um, I sold the house directly across the street and my clients were concerned when they heard they got a notice in the mail and they asked me if I knew anything about it, which I didn't. And so I came tonight to learn about the project. Um, my first um, feeling when I heard about the project was um, so much <laughs> excitement about um, the possibility of this building being taken care of and restored, something being done with it other than the cyclone fence. It was actually really hard to sell property around the building with the cyclone fence. It's not a really attractive site. Um, I, I also work with Jenna in the same office. And so I, if I would have known, I just would have called her today and um, asked her about it, but I'm happy to be here tonight. And I am curious about, um, further curious about the plans beyond what's happening with the front building. Like, is it going to be a park in the back pub, a public space that all people would be able to use? Or I just want to know more information that I can pass on to my clients and also as a community member, I'm just, I want to express my gratitude for the people that are taking this on and um, making Springfield amazing. It's just really wonderful what's been happening. So thank you. Hi, Zach. It's your turn. Please state your name and address. And if you're pro, I mean, for, against, or neutral. Thank you. My name is Zach Gosa Lewis. My address is 525 Pioneer Parkway West, Unit 1. Uh, it's directly adjacent to the property. I am neutral, wanting to learn more, um, wanting to know more information about how this will align with the various plans, uh, commitment to making the housing in the area affordable. Um, I think that's my only real question concern is wanting to know how that aligns with the East Kelly uh, Butte Development Plan that made a lot of mentions about, yes, that is high, uh, high density residential, but also how is it gonna be affordable for the folks that are in the area and how is the developer gonna work? You know, As it states, it is market rate, but wanting to know more information about that as someone who lives in the area and is curious about the pricing. Thank you. And as I said, neutral. Thank you. I believe that was it for our um, in pre present um, speakers. Okay, do we have any uh, telephone participants uh, in line to speak? 
I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand on Zoom and nobody is um, called in. Uh, so at this point, um, we could have the staff uh, respond to any of the comments if she wants to do that. Again, um, I don't believe I can actually answer the question that came up regarding affordability. Uh, that might be a question for the developer and future property owner. Um, that's all I got. And I see Commissioner Cuevio has his hand up. Uh, yes, I believe um, this is the time I was instructed to bring forward the independent knowledge that I had regarding the transportation system. Um, I believe there was a discussion last night at city council about the design plans for Mill Street. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend that discussion, but I do have some concerns um, uh, regarding transportation in the area, particularly Mill Street, uh, West D, uh, both south of the site and um, west of there. And um, that uh, I believe there's, um, they're, they're, I think they function as arterials, even though they may be neighborhood collectors. And there's a lot of excessive speeding, et cetera, in that area. So I had a lot of concerns when I saw um, high density residential and, um, but now that I see that the building is being um, uh, preserved rather than torn down and say uh, uh, driveways uh, coming out onto Mill Street, I'm less concerned about the, about the project as I see it now. But I did wanna mention that I do believe that uh, the part of the thing that we say um, in the uh, application that the pro property is presented with adequate public facilities, services and transportation networks. I don't believe that as, as it exists right now, that the transportation system in that vicinity is adequate for even what we're doing right now. But, so that's my independent knowledge. I thought I did need to bring that up. Thank you. Commissioner Buck. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just uh, kind of wanted to circle back. I noticed on Springfield, Oregon Speaks, uh, there was a question about um, the development of the rest of the property, and, and that was brought up again tonight. And I'm just, just clarifying if somebody has that answer, the developer or, or applicant, I imagine the developer. Uh, I'm just curious if there is an answer to that. Is it appropriate to ask for a response? The, the applicant gets final rebuttal. Okay. And so the applicant can address that um, in final rebuttal or if the applicant wants to defer to um, someone else to, to answer that question, that's fine. But I would also note, like, um, let's be clear about which criteria of approval the question is directed towards. I'll confess I would like to hear the same. Um, I, I think that it is for, for me. Um, it's been brought brought up by community members, and I, I just want to make sure that that gets spoken to. I don't know that it's going to necessarily sway my my vote one way or the other, but um, I, I think part of our job is to make sure the community is getting heard. And uh, just wanted to put that out there. I mean, whatever the answer is, I think it is it is. But I just you know would like to see if there is an answer to it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I apologize. I want to make sure I'm answering at the correct time. So if you'd like me to address that issue, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Is that appropriate, Sandy? Please do. And I will go. We lost your sound there. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Or am I reconnected? You're there. That's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the remainder of the property, uh, we've essentially split the property into uh, one third and two thirds. So one third is, is for this particular development uh, for high density residential. The remaining two thirds will remain public land open. 
use and we do have property there that the Springfield School District is going to retain. Uh, we currently have our, our technology department that operates out of that building. Loading dock and small warehouse that we operate there and our print services department is also there as well as a small training facility. So um, what we anticipate doing is working with the developer and putting up a uh, attractive uh, barrier, whether it's a, a, a split face concrete wall or or whatever that looks like. Um, we want to be good neighbors with the, the developer. We want to be good neighbors with the remainder of the community. I, that's clearly um, important to the school district. We understand the concerns of the community and we want to make sure that we are uh, sensitive to that. So we will retain two thirds of that uh, and, and make sure that we're good stewards of that property. Um, and then the, the third that is being uh, potentially uh, hopefully rezoned would, would be the developer's property to, uh, you know, do with what they have, have planned. So that's the relationship that we anticipate moving forward. Thank you. Very good. At this time, are we ready for a motion to close the public hearing and or the public record or continue? I have a couple questions still. Oh, okay, my apologies, I missed that, please. A couple of questions, and I would be remiss if I didn't plug this um, as I tend to do. Um, I appreciate, in, especially in this housing crisis right now, um, the opportunity for more units. Um, our community is lacking severely in condos, and I think this is a great opportunity to explore that option. Um, as I was preparing for this meeting tonight, I went back through my emails, um, my uh, city emails, and in an email that we received on March 20, or excuse me, um, yes, March 29th, uh, the new land use and permit applications for March 21st through the 25th, um, I noticed that this application was originally sent to change from PLO to MDR. And I see now that we are seeing that as HDR. And I'm curious what, um, just as an explanation for that, if we can have one um, to see what the change was there. Can we get a response from the applicant? Thank you for the question. Um, I, th I think as we looked at the development further and we went out and, and talked to the, the developer, we realized that the um, intended use was more in line with high density residential as we work with city staff. Um, so I apologize if I don't have all of the details on the change from MDR to HDR. Um, and I know the developers on online as well. And so I would I would kind of lean on that on that side to to discuss the proposed development. Um, obviously, the district is looking at making sure that we're in line with city goals. We want to make sure we're good good neighbors. We're, we're good partners. Um, but but apologizing in advance, I would probably lean on the uh, developer to um, provide additional information. I want to apologize. I use the acronym MDR for those that are not aware, MDR medium density residential. And what we're looking at right now is HDR, high density residential. So my understanding is that I don't think we have anybody online who can answer her question directly uh, more completely. Is that? I, I believe we have the uh, Nicholas Lawler who has his hand up that is connected with the developer. Is, uh, Nicholas, uh, please go ahead. Nicholas, you have your hand up anyway. Thank you. Um, so I've represented the developer, uh, Ben Baser, on this transaction. I'm a real estate agent in Eugene Springfield. Um, frankly, this is the first I've heard of the MDR uh, as we entered into this transaction and, and submitted an offer and uh, had that offer accepted. It has been our understanding that the properties around it are high density residential and and the discussion has always been high density residential so I can't speak exactly to um, what the counselors identified but I'm wondering if that might have just been an error okay fair enough uh, Commissioner Salazar Commissioner I, it sorry. may it we can't roll out that it wasn't a typo in the report so the MDR on that um, development update report just may have been a typo. 
um, in capturing that input, those applications and sending them out. Thank you. So fair to say that it's been HDR the whole time. The intent has been HDR okay. along, all along. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, uh, Nicholas. Uh, Commissioner Salazar. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to um, speak to one of the points that um, Commissioner Quavela made about the adequacy of transportation services to the site. Um, I do believe that, I mean, just based on the, the site map, this, this um, site is one block away from the closest MX stop, two blocks away from the next closest MX stop. And so by most definitions that would make this um, development high or transit oriented development uh, by many definitions short of having um, transportation like a, a bus line or something on Mill Street. There's not much closer that, that a bus could get or transportation services could, to, could get. Um, so having more density closer to, um, closer to the, the transportation services that we have, I think is a, is a plus. In terms of the um, specific criteria for approval, um, I don't see this application as too dissimilar to other applications that have come before us in terms of aligning um, the zoning map with the Metro plan, which this would happen. This site is, is um, uh, described as um, high density residential in the Metro plan. And um, I think it would be a good thing to bring that within alignment of the Metro plan. Thank you. I don't wanna bypass. I, I see uh, Melissa, you had your hand raised and I'm not sure from the video whether it's still raised. Would you like to comment? I actually lowered it because I wanted to respond to Commissioner Clevula's uh, concerns as well, but I saw his hand up, so I wanted him to chime in first before I respond. Okay, Commissioner Quavela. Uh, yeah, thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I, I probably should go ahead and step in and say um, I appreciate what Commissioner Salazar is saying about densities and um, uh, proximity to transit, et cetera. But as, as my statement really was directed toward is I currently believe that both Mill Street and D Street, both because of their angular relationships with, uh, with not being at 90 degrees to, to one another. It's more like, a, I'm gonna guess like a 75 degree angle. So that they're uh, uh, slight, slightly skewed intersections. And I have seen, I, I believe Mill Street carries a lot of traffic and that there is a tremendous amount of excessive speeding on there. So I did have a lot of concerns when I first saw HDR. Now, if I would have seen the whole site, um, Des tried to be designated HDR and that the building was not going to be preserved. To me, that would present a situation that I believe um, I would need to see that Mill Street and West D Street would be reconstructed properly with better crosswalks, better bicycle facilities, perhaps something to traffic home before a uh, site could, uh, could be wholesalely redeveloped from something like POS to, to uh, HDR. So that was my objection, but the more I hear about the project, the less I'm concerned about that because I think that 35, 35 residences will, will not impact it enough that I don't think it's gonna tremendously decrease the safety. But I do believe, again, once I, I, I believe there's a, a very serious safety issue on those streets in that area. Thank you, Melissa, did you still want to comment? Yes, please. And thank you, Commissioner Fabula, for adding the additional comment. And I have some good news. Our Springfield Transportation System Plan has two pedestrian and bike projects, uh, one on Mill Street and then one on D&E at Pioneer Parkway, which will address everything you mentioned, traffic calming, um, bike uh, facilities, and pedestrian crosswalks. So stay tuned for that. And I don't know if any of my other colleagues would like to chime in to add anything. Okay, again, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand so that we can see. Commissioner Landon, I'll just add a little bit. So um, as Melissa was saying, the Mill Street project um, will include bike lanes 
Um, it will remove parking on one side. It will include um, pedestrian crossings as well as the traffic calming. So the council did discuss that last night as Commissioner Cuevelis said, um, and it was recognized that there is a lot of speeding, but that traffic calming um, should help reduce the speeds in that area. Um, there are no plans um, directly for D Street, but we don't have any um, congestion issues according to the analysis we've done. So it's not like we have a low level of service in terms of congestion at the intersections. I think it's more from what I'm hearing that concerns are more about the geometry, the speeds, and then the access. So it's rather than congestion. Um, so looks like Commissioner Quavela may want to respond. Commissioner okay. Quavela, uh, okay, so we're good there. Uh, do we have any other comment from the audience or commissioners? We, we don't ask for more comment from the audience, um, but I would just give the applicant one final opportunity at rebuttal since there have been some other points raised just, to, just in case. Not a bad idea. Uh, I have no other rebuttal. I would just like to thank the commissioners for your, your due diligence and your thorough um, questioning. I, I think that we as a school district and you as a city are all uh, moving in the right direction for uh, addressing some of the housing challenges that we have. And um, I am equally as, as excited to see that the uh, structure itself will remain intact. Um, I think that's great for the community, great for the city, and obviously, uh, you know, for the school district, we're excited about that. So thank you for your consideration. And uh, uh, let's see what this looks like in a year. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, are we ready for a motion to close the public hearing and or the public record or continue the hearing and hold the record open to another date? Commissioner Salazar. Thank you, Chair. I move to close the public hearing and the public record. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion to the motion? We take a roll call vote. Sure, Commissioner Landon, I'm putting you first this time. Okay, aye. Uh, Commissioner Bergen? Aye. Commissioner Buck? Aye. Commissioner Salazar? Aye. Commissioner Cuevola? Yes. And then Commissioner Gill uh, is, has um, excused herself from this decision and Commissioner McKinley is absent. Okay, so I believe that leaves us with, uh, is that five in favor, two abstaining? Okay. Two who are not present. One okay. abstain and one absent. One abstain, one absent, ergo the motion carries. Uh, is there, let's see, is there any discussion on the application? Well, we just did. Separate item, is there a discussion uh, uh, of this application or are we ready for a motion to approve the zoning map amendment? Is that separate? That almost sounds like the same thing, Sandy. It sounds like we've just all, gone through and approved that. Well, you, you closed the public hearing. Now you need to actually approve the um, application. Okay, that's also done by vote, is it not? Yes. Okay, so um, can we have a vote on uh, the motion? You need you need a motion to vote before you can vote on it. But I, I would I would like to move that we approve the applicant at the application as outlined in our packet and discussed here. Okay, we have a second. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? To close. Okay, can we get a roll call vote? Commissioner Landon? Aye. Commissioner Salazar? Aye. Commissioner Cuevola? Yes. Commissioner Bergen? Don't get in the camera. Uh, I, I just, a little confused. The motion was to adopt, and I, you had mentioned to close. We're voting on adopting, correct? Yes. Aye, thank you. And Commissioner Buck? Aye. Motion carries uh, six eyes, no opposed. Did I get that right? Five eyes, because um, we did not have a vote from Commissioner Gill. She abstained. Okay, five eyes, one abstention. Right, and Commissioner McKinley is absent. And one absent. Thank you very much. 
Um, motion carries. Do we have any commissioners with a report on a city council meeting? Mr. Bergen. Thank you. I attended last night's city council meeting. Um, unfortunately, I did not was not able to catch the important pieces that Commissioner Quavilo was talking about during the work session. Um, and hopefully I can tread through my notes well. Uh, May 15th through the 21st was um, a proclamation for first responders. Um, and I don't have the exact verbiage of what that is um, called. And then May 15th through the 21st is also a public works proclamation. And we talk, they talked about how important the public works and the first responders have been um, into our community. We, I keep saying we, uh, they talked about um, the annexation of um, a couple of lots into our, um, into the city. One was Mountain Gate area and Jessica Drive. Um, there was um, some opposition from the Fair Housing Council. They requested a deferral on that. And then the staff determined that there wasn't any merit to the deferral request um, and that they felt it was appropriate to close that was adopted. Annexation request, uh, Mount Vernon Road was adopted. Um, the master fees adjustment schedule, it had been previously talked about and it was adopted. Um, and then another piece that was interesting was um, expanding the open air dining and downtown and mixed use districts. This was the first reading on this and th this is an opportunity. Um, there was discussion about what that would look like in our communities of allowing outside seating on sidewalks um, for our restaurants, um, as they were many of them were forced uh, to do this during COVID, and um, it has turned out to be a, a great opportunity for outdoor dining in our communities. Um, and then they talked about the liquor liquor license endorsements for the year, and. Um, then the city attorney brought forward um, the amendment to Lane County deadly force plan and mentioned House Bill 4301. Um, and then the city manager wanted to recognize Mark Rust and uh, Christina Kraz for the um, all of the work in the updated code. And that was actually the code development um, has, was adopted last night with city council. Um, and there was a lot of conversation about all of the work that went into that and what that looks like. Um, and if we wanted to adopt the, um, a couple of different siting re requirements as far as setbacks and whatnot. So that was really great to hear. And it felt good being a part of that on the planning commission and then seeing it through to the end through city council. So that was awesome. Um, and that is, my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other business from members of the Planning Commission? Seeing none, do we have any business from? Uh, I, I have a um, <laughs> discussion I'd like to make. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been, I'm the uh, representative. I'm the representative on uh, the uh, Community Development Advisory Committee. And um, just wanted to say that we had a me meeting recently that uh, we've decided to fund two particular projects. One is to uh, plant street trees in lower income areas where uh, street trees do not exist. That's us. The city actually made that application for federal money to do that. And then also to rehabilitate some uh, duplexes in um, there's someone has their uh, microphone on somehow, but um, rehabilitate some houses for uh, duplexes for St. Vincent de Paul at about 64th and A Street. And other than that, um, we are tripling the amount of funds available for, uh, we are recommending to triple the amount of funds for um, home rehabilitation for lower income people within the city. And we are also maintaining uh, half a million dollars for, for potential acquisition of land for um, 
uh, low cost housing within the city. So those are all, and then also continuing to participate with Lane County in the uh, task force that deals with the homeless. So that's uh, the recommendation we're gonna carry forth the city council. We have another meeting in early June uh, to discuss um, COVID relief money that's also available from the, from the government. So I hope again, uh, as I uh, transition off of um, the Planning Commission and CDAC, that there is a member who's gonna be interested in taking over what I think is really valuable work for uh, people in need in the city. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Gill. I attended the May 2nd uh, work session and meeting. Um, so there was conversation uh, around the procedures for the city council appointment process um, and adjusting some rules around hybrid meeting um, requirements from the state so that our rules match the state rules. Um, and the and how email records are handed handled. Uh, Nurses Week and National Law Enforcement Week were proclamations were uh, announced, and then there were public hearings on um, a couple of annexations and uh, the storm wastewater fees and and wastewater budgets were approved. And um, then they did the ordinance um, hearing for the comprehensive plan. And that was all, oh, it was a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any other members of the Planning Commission with uh, uh, reports uh, or business? Okay, uh, hearing none, do we have any other business uh, from the Development and Public Works Department? Yes, commissioners, uh, I have a few items. First of all, I'd like to introduce Sarah Weaver. So this is her first meeting with you. Uh, Sarah Weaver is our new uh, administrative specialist for community development, and she will be supporting the planning commission. Uh, and um, then I want to talk about uh, your upcoming meetings. So we do have a meeting in June on Tuesday, the 7th. Uh, it is a meeting for the Committee for Citizen Involvement. So one of the questions to you all is, now that we're doing hybrid, um, would you want that meeting to be in the Jesse main room like we used to do for work sessions or in the council chambers? Um, doesn't really matter, they're both um, equipped for these hybrid meetings, but it's a different format in terms of how we sit. So particularly for those of you that are here, um, if you have a preference, whether we meet here or in the other room, um, let us know. Any ideas on that? Any feedback on that preference? Grant you, if you're coming virtually, it doesn't much matter. Um, I don't really have a press uh, preference. I don't know, is the camera better in there? <laughs> I'm just teasing about the camera angle again. Well, we could try um, it for that one and then you can see what we, which one you like, if it makes a difference. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever is going to be easiest for um, our, you as staff, I imagine we would then move in here if we had a public hearing. Yeah, we do not have one at your next meeting. Um, it would just be the Committee for Citizen Involvement is the only agenda item that we have. And that's to appoint some members to an advisory committee for the comprehensive plan map clarification project. Then I personally would defer to you and your team on what's going to be easiest for a setup. I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay. Pick a spot and we'll be happy we'll show up. <laughs> Where the lights are. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, and then uh, we do unfortunately have an application that we need to bring to you in July. Um, for a public hearing. And so I sent out an email asking about hearing dates, whether that would be better for you to be Tuesday, July 5th or Wednesday, July 6th. Um, so far I have two doesn't matters and one prefer the sixth. Uh, is anybody else who hasn't um, responded to me have a preference for those dates? I'm gonna say Tuesday just out of habit. 
Um, I am still waiting to confirm some uh, some summer summer plans. I but I would I would say maybe uh, Tuesday would be better for me. I'll also say it doesn't matter for me. So we have two, two, and three doesn't matter. Right. I guess like, you get a pick. Well, I've heard one preference for the sixth and two for the fifth. So um, sounds like we would go for Tuesday the fifth. Okay. Um, and that meeting uh, would be at 7 p.m. unless we get something else to put on at, um, earlier, but um, it's still a little bit early to know for sure. But on June 7th, Tuesday, that one will be at 6 p.m. for sure. Um, and that's all I have for you tonight. Sandy, we wouldn't have a meeting that third week in June? I don't have any agenda items scheduled for that yet. It's still possible something would come up, but I'm, I, I'm doubting that we'll have something for your second meeting in June for that third week. Okay, Commissioner Quavelo, you have a comment. Uh, yes, it's a request. Um, I did attend a council work session on the 9th of uh, May, uh, work uh, discussing low cost housing and uh, um, Sandy led that discussion. I was wondering if you could give us a brief debrief on that. Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks. Um, so the first question to the council was whether they wanted to continue the waivers of the system development charges for accessory dwelling units. So that program went in place several years ago um, and was slated to expire at the end of June. The council decided to keep that waiver in place for five more years with annual check-ins. Uh, they also are considering and um, asking staff to come back with a more spelled out program to waive system development charges for homes that would be available for purchase to low income households that are built by a nonprofit agency so for example, Habitat for Humanity has 12 lots off of um, Q Street between 11th and 12th. Um, so the, those, for example, could be uh, potentially eligible for a waiver, um, but this waiver would actually be in the form of a forgivable loan for five years to guarantee that the home would stay um, in ownership for a with a low income household if that if that household wanted to sell within that five years, um, that the next owner would also need to be low income or otherwise they'd repay the loan of the SDCs. Uh, the third item was to continue allowing people to live in recreational vehicles on private property per guidelines that the city had put in place. Uh, they, um, want to revisit that again in a year uh, to see um, how that's doing. I mean, there was some thought of trying to make it permanent. Other counselors does not want that to become a permanent thing, would rather have um, our housing needs addressed in a different way. But since they're not addressed now, that that's the best solution for the short term. And so just as a recap, that would allow people to live in RVs on residential property with single family or duplex homes or in commercial property churches and such, um, but without rent. So it, it's to provide somebody a place to, to basically park their RV and live there um, with certain guidelines, like I said. Uh, then we talked further about the tax exemption for housing diversity, which is um, our version of what Eugene calls MUPTI multi-unit property tax exemption and discussed some of the public benefits that they would want to see in exchange for those exemptions. And um, we'll more fully develop that program to bring back to council for consideration in the fall. Uh, we have hired a housing analyst uh, by the name of Katie Carroll. She actually has been working for the city and you may have remember her from the floodplain amendments that she was working on when she was a 
fellow from Portland State University over the summertime. So she liked us so much, she decided she'd keep working and we're thrilled because um, she's really great. So she's going to be able to increase our capacity to deal with things like that, uh, housing diversity tax exemption, and then other exemptions that we may also look to in the future. Thanks, Sandy. All right, thank you very much. Any other business from um, public development? Okay. Um, hearing that, uh, we're done. I adjourn the Planning Commission meeting for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you and see you all uh, in June.